Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today we are doing a full review of this guy. This is the Civivi Vision FG. Now, of all the reviews I've done in the past, this is the one I'm really nervous about because I do not want it to look like this knife is faultless. There are many, many things I love about this knife. This knife has been very difficult to keep out of my pocket. They are just a few uh, niggles that I just want to talk about. But believe you me, I, I'm not... Like, I'm not delusional, this knife is not faultless, but just forewarning, this is going to be a lot of gushing about this knife. So what is this? This is the Civivi Vision FG. It is designed by Snackstan, which is a very popular knife designer now coming out of Malaysia. He's done a few stuff for Wii slash Civivi. He's done the Wii Vision R, which is the much more expensive version of this guy. That goes for around 269 USD. This guy goes for about 78 USD. And for me, under $80, that is still a budget pricing. He's also done the Buster and I think a few other stuff. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into some of the measurements first. We have here the weight measurement because this is quite a heavy guy. It's quite a chunky guy. That's a zero rise it. It's in pounds. It's coming in at about 4.3 ounces for right around 3.5 inches of blade. So, quite a, a chunky knife. Okay, let's uh, do some measurements right here. Have it in inches. We are here in terms of the blade length. We're coming in at just over three and a half inches, right around there. In terms of its uh, overall handle length, we're looking in at about 4.43 inches. In terms of the height of the blade, in case you want to know. Because this is a, a high flat grind, in case you want to know what to expect, is just over 1.7, 1. Uh, 1. sorry, 1.07, 1.08 inches. We have the thickness of the handle at about 4.0.47 inches, so right around pair of three, uh, pair of three thickness. We have a handle, a blade thickness of about 0 0.12 inches, and the width of the knife itself is there we go, zero, oh, 1.3 inches. So there we go. So now let's get into the review from tip to butt as usual. It is on my channel. Okay. So let's talk about the blade here. The blade here is made out of, I don't know if you can see it, it's very difficult to find. Uh, should be able to see it right there, Nitro V Steel. Now Nitro V Steel is one of these uh, very good to go budget steels. It has a good amount of strength in it. It has decent amount of hardness, meaning edge resistance is decent. And it's also quite corrosion resistant. Don't get me wrong, it is not as corrosion resistant as something like Vanex or LC200N, but it will be good to go from an everyday point of view. Coupled with the fact that it actually has this DLC coating on the outside, and in fact, all of the liners are also DLC coated. This guy is actually really good to go when it comes to corrosion resistance. We have a very stainless steel, not completely stainless, but a pretty darn good stainless steel. Uh, and with coating here. Now, uh, you are going to want to strop this from time to time uh, because it is Nitro V. Expect it to function in terms of its hardness around 154 cm, that whereabouts, but pretty darn good. In terms of its uh, toughness, it's actually a pretty tough steel. So good to go for everyday carry. But what's the, the best thing about this blade is actually the geometry. What we have here is that we have a very high flat grind. So coming off of a blade that is not super duper thick, 0 0.12 inches is pretty much average. That is the same thickness as, I believe, this guy, the Protect Malibu. It is thinner than the Pair of 3 Lightweight. It is slightly thicker than this guy. This is the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint. Okay, but it does have a very high flat grind and it comes to a nice keen edge. It is not the sliciest knife uh, in my collection. You can see from the bevel here, it doesn't actually have a lot of uh, bevel edge in it. So it is not the slicest knife in my collection, but it'll do really well. This knife, this blade geometry is really designed to be more of a harder use kind of guy rather than something that's super duper slicey, which is like this guy, which not only had, does it have a thinner blade stock, but it's also hollow ground. So very good knife. In fact, if you go to Snacks' uh, Instagram page and you see what he puts his knife through, they are really designed to be hard use. You know, they're meant to like whack into uh, pieces of uh, uh, two by fours. You know, some of the more expensive ones, the Vision R or his custom versions of those, he takes those out diving or his friends take it out diving and then they cut rope down at the bottom of the seabed, that kind of stuff. So really designed for hard use in mind. Another thing I love about this knife is like the blade shape. Now this is, uh, I would, so, some people might call this a Warren Cliff, but it's not. It's not perfectly straight, the edge here. Okay, if it was perfectly straight, 
it would be a one cliff. This is more of a, a river's tonto or a sheep's foot. <clears throat> You might find similar shapes in, like, say, Benjamin, the 940 Osborne will have a very similar blade shape to this. But what it means is that it has this kind of uh, tip here, and it comes to a very nice keen edge. I mean, I mean just compared to the tip of the pair of three lightweight. Yeah, this is going to be a much beefier guy. This is going to be a much thinner guy. So this kind of blade shape, great for these kind of pull cuts because you have this nice point at the tip there. You have a lot of tip control. Uh, if you have your thumb or your finger down here into the uh, finger groove here, and then you have your finger all the way up here, you have a lot of control of this tip. Just a great cutter, cutting open, packaging, hot dog buns, any kind of packaging, it's great. It's also great because the way you hold this, you can get a lot, and let me show you with this, yeah. You can get a lot of the blade onto the cutting board. So this actually makes a very good chef's knife. There's a very good reason why a lot of Sentoku chef knives look like this because you can get a lot of the blade on the chopping board. So you have this amazing roll slicing angle that you have here. Great for slicing vegetables or meat. So as a result, this blade uh, has a very good blade steel, especially for a budget blade steel. It has an amazing uh, geometry, very high flat grind. It comes to a nice a sharp edge but the design of the blade extremely extremely utility focused great for pull cuts great for food prep and yeah just overall just great knife now in terms of the length it is slightly over 3.5 inches so i know sometimes in america you have these uh, laws about 3.5 inches this is going to be slightly beyond that okay moving back a little bit <clears throat> we have no jimping at the top here but the knife is actually chamfered let me just show it to you yeah, see all these edges? They are chamfered. See that? See how the light plays with that? So it's actually a very comfortable knife to, to use your thumb up top or your index finger up top. You don't have these sharp edges like you would get from, from like spider coils. You have these like harder edges on the edges here. Uh, let's see now. Do I have any other knives that do that? I think my gonzo, my gonzo would be... Yeah, so, so the gonzo, which is a $30, $20 knife, also has a hard edge here. But these guys, nicely chamfered all the way around. And that is something you get to see throughout the knife, which I will talk about a little bit later on. Next up, we have this finger trial here, which completely uh, completely avoids the plunge grind here. So you don't have any like unsharpened edge here, which sometimes you get on uh, cheaper or less, less well-produced knives. And even the bottom here, okay? I don't know if you can see that. That's also chamfered right there. That's also chamfered. So you have a very nice, just kind of like, pinch choking you can really choke up quite well and you get a lot of uh, control and you get a lot of comfort when you choke up up here as well so that's really good sometimes when you choke up with certain knives like this guy you have these um uh, jipping which provide a lot of good traction but the corners here they didn't knock it down so the corners here can be quite sharp so uh just really great in hand when you want to use it long term Great, great cutting device. It does have these nice thumb studs. Now the thumb studs are also DLC coated, but they have started wearing out in my pocket. So this sits in my pocket, this rubs against uh, the cloth of my pants. So you can see already starting to wear out. On the other side here, uh, just the corners here, uh, where my finger kind of interacts with the thumb stud. <clears throat> but one thing I gotta say about the thumb stud is that they are white, slightly white off the scales. So you can get to them very easily. <clears throat> Whether or not you want to push it out from the top, or you want to push it out by following the, the contours of the scales here. Both of them work. Easy to reverse flick, easy to, to actually flick, uh, uh, to do your regular thumb flick. Now, one thing, if I could ever fault this knife on anything in particular, it is that this knife has come out, has come open in my pants. Now, I keep it in my pants. Nice deep carry pocket clip. And then when I go pull it out, this thumb stud really catches the corner of my pocket and there are times, it has happened twice already, where I can feel this guy opening up in my pocket. I checked my pocket, it didn't cut anything, but just keep that in mind. You really wanna, when you wanna pull this out, you really wanna angle it out a little bit before you pull it out. Whereas if you just pull it out, it's happened twice, this has caught the corner of my pants and kind of works like an Amazon opener. Just, just FYI, keep that in mind. Another thing, uh, another reason why that happens is that this doesn't have like a poppy detent, like uh, like a button lock where the friction is overcome and kind of pops open. Or let's say a liner lock where there is a little detent ball right there. Yeah, there's a little detent ball that interacts with the hole that's somewhere in here that creates a, a friction-based hole. 
this hole is slightly different this hole is more of a spring hole very similar to like uh, the feeling of like a, a an omega spring hole where there's nothing really that kind of holds it in place where it's just spring tension and the geometry of the lock face now moving back a little bit let's talk about this lock i think this is what a lot of people are excited about the super lock uh, that is designed by snackstein a few companies have used it, so Vivi and we have used it. I think Sandrine also use, uh, uses it, and of course, uh, Snacks and his customs, they use it. Now, if I were to define how this lock works, think of it as something like a cold steel triad lock mixed with a spider co a ball lock. So, and this is how it works. There's a little hole here, and I can actually show this. If I pull it out, there's a little spring in here, right? <coughs> That interacts with a little post here. And then that spring, uh, let me put it back in, uh, is pushing this little nubbin here forward. It's pushing it that way. So as this opens up, two things happen. Number one, the stop here, see that little silver part there? That hits the stop pin right there. Okay? And then what happens is, this little nubbin right here goes into that hole, this little hole right here, right there and interacts with this lock face as well to force it down so that this part here hits that stop pin okay so how is this like a triad lock if this is like this is like a triad lock because the triad lock works the same it has a little um, crevice where the lock face goes into and presses down and then there is a little post here that is a stop pin that forces it down into the post and that does the exact same thing but whereas the triad lock, the spring is vertical, for this guy, the spring is horizontal. So in that way, it works kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't say it works like a, uh, like, like, like a Benjamin Axis lock, but it works a lot like the Spiderco ball lock, or maybe the, the Benjamin Anthem, that particular axis lock, that's how it works. It has a spring that goes, uh, that pushes the bar that way, and then it locks it in. So what you have here is that you have an extremely strong lock, a strong uh, a lock that mimics the strength of a back lock or a triad lock, but it has the fidgibility of a Demco lock essentially, where it locks up and it locks up solid. There is no up and down blade play at all. And then when you pull it back, it has this free swinging action, which is extremely fidgety. And that's an amazing, amazing lock design. Now the advantage of this lock, this particular one on the Civivi Vision FG is that they've added jimping. So if you look at the Wii version, this is completely smooth metal. A lot of people complain about that, myself included. But in this case, you have jimping at the top. This is very good for, you know, if you want to choke back on it. But to disengage the lock, they've actually added jimping on the front corner here. And this jimping is just as good as, uh, as the jimping on my... ZT. So the ZT has the best flipper tap jimping where you have this nice uh, grippy jimping and then you have chamfered and rounded edges around the flipper tap. Makes it extremely comfortable to use it. This has the exact same feel on the front end here. Rounded on the edges here and uh, also chamfered. So very comfortable to use this guy. A lot of people when they get the, vi the Vision R, they actually like put the jimping on themselves at this guy. Well, it comes in standard. Now the great thing about this knife is that it has a little peephole. Right. This is, so this little people really much really like shows how the lock intersects or how the lock uh, interacts with this little hole right here. You can't really see it here because of the lighting angle, but under like regular daylight, you can actually see it, and that's actually really good because uh, you can see if there's any kind of gunk or dirt or whatever. Because he really did design this guy to be used in the dirt and the mud. Now. Uh, one thing I can complain about is that this is running on not wash uh fossil bronze washers. These are running on ball bearings, uh, ceramic ball bearings. You can check out the disassembly for that. Now, the advantage of that is that it, you do get this nice smooth, fidgety action. But if the whole ethos of this guy, the whole concept of this guy is to design it to be really hard use, uh, to be able to use it in any situation and have. The, the lock that's strong and then this guy is going to open and lock whenever you need to and to have bearings on that on a knife that's supposed to be hard use in my opinion is a little bit of an oxymoron there is i've read online the possibility of getting skiff bronze washers and then adding it on this guy so that is something i for sure am going to be trying sometime this year so that's the thing uh 
the hardware, hardware is good. We have T8 here. We have T8 here, but like this is the female end of, of, of this post here, so it doesn't really turn. I'm gonna use a T6 to turn uh to turn this screw to take it apart. But essentially very easy to take apart, it's just two screws to take apart and you know bobs your uncle. Just one thing I gotta uh, I, I gotta mention is that since it's under spring tension, you gotta be sure that uh you you really take care of uh, disassembling it. You wanna make sure you cover it with a cloth as you're trying to split it apart. If not, in my experience, with the Demco uh, shark lock, the springs kind of can bounce out and then disappear. It hasn't happened to me yet. I'm a lot more careful these days. Now, uh, one thing I want to talk about is this, this um, the handle itself. Now, this is the G10 variant. And again, I just want to say chamfering all the way around. So it makes it very, very comfortable. In fact, even on the inside here, and a lot of budget uh, companies don't do this, a lot of expensive companies don't do this, the inside of the liners are also rounded. So as a result, you don't really have any hot spots on this guy. Some people, depending on the position of their hands, might have a little hot spot on this clip. But as for me, this clip really falls in this empty space in my hand. So very, very comfortable in hand, no hot spots from any angle. You don't get a hot spot from this because it's rounded and chamfered. You don't get any hot spots from in here because it's rounded and chamfered. You don't get any hot spots from the G10 because it's rounded and chamfered. And then also here, rounded and chamfered as well. Very, very comfortable in hand. A lot of great detail in this guy. The G10, nice and grippy. This is like PM2 levels of grippy G10. So keep that in mind. It will like soften up over time as you use it, but this is like pretty, pretty rough G10. Like this is like PM2 para 3 level levels of roughness. Now, another advantage of this lock, this uh, super lock, is that you have this very strong sense of solidity in this knife. Not only does it have liners that goes all the way around, okay, and the liners are, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's boxed or not, I can't really tell, but the liners go all the way around. And in terms of its, uh, uh, in terms of its scalloping on the, not scalloping, in terms of its weight reduction on the inside, it doesn't have anything specific. Uh, uh, that is to the liners. It's actually designed to have weight reduction in the in the handle design itself because you have these holes that drill straight through the G10 and the liners itself, and they really go all the way around. And these are, by the way, also chamfered on the inside. Pretty smooth on the inside. So coupled with uh with these liners and this lock bar at the back, this guy feels extremely solid in hand. It's one of the most solid feeling knives I ever had. My ZT doesn't feel as solid because, well, CF has a tiny bit of flex to it. And this could all just be in my head, but, you know, even, even this guy, this guy, I think because it feels a little sleek because of this matte finish, it doesn't feel as grippy in hand. But this guy, this guy really feels like it's meant to be, like, used up and beaten up. In fact, uh, one of the things that I've seen on uh, Stax's website is that, uh, on his Instagram, is that sometimes when he is whacking at this too hard, uh, when he's trying to, uh, yeah, when he's just whacking at this too hard, what happens is the the lock and the and the stop pin actually digs in harder into the blade. So you get this very strong lock stick. And I've had someone in the comment section in the unboxing talk about this extreme lock stick that happens. So what he did was he really flicked it up really hard. And what Stanks did was he really beat on it really hard to the point that it developed this lock stick because the lock and the stop pin kept digging into the blade. So actually what Snack does is, is that he spine wax this on purpose to help disengage the lock. So that is, that is by design how these locks work. The harder you use it, the stronger the lock will become. And I think that's really, really amazing. Okay, moving back a little bit, uh, let's talk about this pocket clip, fantastic pocket clip, recess screws, and it's recessed into the G10 itself. So you get this clean aesthetic that your pants can slide underneath. You have this kind of duck bill clip, which, well, Metal Complex really hates it, but I really love it because it's really easy to get your pants underneath it. I really like this kind of like a flat on, on the tip of it because it doesn't become a hot spot unlike something that just has a ski jump. This time, uh, this guy, sometimes when you press on it, you really feel that point. This guy, you're not going to feel that point. Ergonomically, this guy is great. <clears throat> now, there's two kinds of ergonomics out there. There is the ergonomics that have very specific finger grooves. And then you have the kind of ergonomics that are kind of just plain and open and there are a few advantages and disadvantages to each of this this guy 
Assuming your hand fits in the exact same, in the exactly perfect position, this could be the most comfortable uh, handle ever in your experience. Now, with me, Paris 3 Lightweight hands don't really fit in that perfectly. It still feels great, but it doesn't really fit in that perfectly in this realm right here. Now, it's different from knife to knife. Like the Native 5 Salt, it is by far the most comfortable pocket knife ergonomics I've ever owned. My fingers just fall perfectly into the finger grooves. And that is the danger with having all these finger grooves. It's one of those things where you either fit perfectly and you love it, or it doesn't really suit you and you're kind of left wanting a little bit more. This guy, the ergonomic goes a little bit differently. It has this kind of no particular way your hand can land. So you can hold on here and can be comfortable. You can hold on here, you can choke up here, it's gonna be comfortable. You can even reverse grip it and it's gonna be pretty comfortable. This kind of ergonomics means that it'll fit even more people pretty comfortably, but no one specifically, absolutely comfortably, unlike let's say a Native 5 Salt. But uh, in my hands, I wear a small size glove. Uh, this guy, perfectly comfortable in my hand. Definitely one of the bigger knives in my collection. The biggest knife in my collection right now, actually, that is not fixed blade and not my kitchen knife. So yeah, fantastic ergonomics. So in conclusion, what do I think about this guy? This guy is making me question how many of my other knives do I need? Okay, it is, it is very fidgety knife in every aspect. You can fidget with this all day, no problem. You have an amazing lock. Oh, and I forgot to say something about this lock. This lock actually has a little pin. Okay, this little pin that goes into the back here. Now, the little trick I showed you where I can take this apart, right? This is as a result of me taking out that pin, and that is by design. In Snacks is mine, having that little pin means that there's less potential error. Someone who doesn't know how to take a knife apart and how to clean it can just have that pin there, and then that stops it from being to from from it being able to completely move out all the way. So with that pin there, it can only go back this far, and you can't lift up. Without that pin, you can actually pull back a little bit, and it actually can lift up. Now, the advantage of this is that you can uh, easily take it apart to disassemble it or clean it. The advantage of having the pin is that you have a much stronger stop, okay? It doesn't feel as squishy when you pull back like this. It feels like there's a bit of a squishiness because there's more spring. Rather than having the stop pin, where it kind of stops the, uh, the, the lock bar here from going too far back. So that's just a little modification that you can do that, that Snacks allows you to do in his design on this one. Now, in the Vision R from, from Wii, they don't have that stop pin. Whereas this guy has that stop pin that you can remove on your own, but do so at your own discretion. Okay, sorry. Back to the conclusion. Got a little ahead of myself. This knife really makes me question many, many knives in my collection. This knife is great ergonomically. It has a a fantastic blade shape, great uh, blade geometry, uh, amazing ergonomics, uh, especially when you're looking for something more of a neutral ergonomic. Very fidgety, very strong lock, easy to take apart, easy to put back together. Very, very easy to carry. This is the biggest knife in my collection, but it carries better than my Para 3 Lightweight. Okay, it carries better than this guy. I would go as far as say that it even carries better than this guy because it's also deep carry. And definitely carries better than my native five salt because in the pocket it's just so narrow and this pocket clip is really designed to go in well this guy is like the perfect uh beater pocket knife in my collection i know that i will still have my native five salt when i go out camping okay when i'm doing food prep or whatever i'm still gonna carry that guy i'm still gonna keep that guy but this guy is for anything that i need to hack and whack uh, this guy is going to be it. This guy is going to be the one that I'm going to carry most of the time during everyday carry because it's just great for utility cutting as well. I need to cut paper. I just open this up. Draw cut. Okay. It's great for cutting a uh, rope. It's great for opening up boxes. It's just, just a great, uh, just a great overall knife to carry around. You know, the, the only complaints I have is just just those super small complaints, which is that number one, it will be better for hard use cases to be on washers so that it can kind of go in rivers and, and you can go to the beach and, and not worry about mud and sand. Pulling in it out of the pocket, it kind of has a, a mistaken, it kind of has a mistaken uh, Emerson wave opener. 
so be careful when you take it out because this has caught up in the corner of my pants and it has pulled out a little bit and and that's it it's just as hard used pocket knives go like this is i think the perfect design in in many aspects it is both hard use and fidgety and that is really hard to come by i would trust this guy in in many situations that i wouldn't trust my para 3 lightweight and for the longest time i was considering buying a regular para 3 in g10 because i wanted something a little bit more hard use but this guy is it this guy has all the hard useness that i want not even need because let's face it i could get by with a victorinox cadet and that I, I wouldn't need anything tougher than that but this guy has more than what i need it has what i want in terms of its hard useness in terms of its fidgibility it's just as fidgetable as anything with a demco shark lock in it it's as fidgety as any uh access lock it has the same level of fidgetiness as anything from spider uh, even the compression lock has the same level of fidgetiness as this and in terms of its design it's just great the lines and the aesthetics are just are just gorgeous like yes it has a lot of the same functions and usage as my AD 20.5 would have but it's just it does it in a much more elegant package and that's it guys again I, I just warned you in the beginning this is going to be a lot of me gushing about the knife it is not flawless but it is just great thank you so much uh snacks for designing this knife and thank you so much we for releasing it in the Wii version and then like refining it and improving it uh for the Civivi version just great job snacks and great job Civivi yeah thanks so much guys and as always stay ready